as more machines powered by self-cooling rotary engines took to the sky, their role grew from simple reconnaissance to combat. The first hostile skirmishes consisted of pilots lobbing grenades or rope to tangle the enemy's propeller as they circled each other at a breathtaking 60 miles an hour. Ah, you will not catch me, Fritz, no way! Take that, you crazy French person, you! Some even exchanged revolver fire. All very tricky whilst you're trying to fly a primitive single-seater aeroplane. Then Frenchman Roland Garros worked out how to fix a forward-facing machine gun to his aircraft, meaning the pilot could look where he was going and where he was firing at the same time. Forward-facing machine guns were a great advantage, but one slight problem was that you were firing bullets into your own spinning wooden propeller. Not a good thing. So Roland, being a clever chap, attached metal plates to deflect the bullets and thus prevent them from making mincemeat of his propeller. Très bien. Garros took off with his high-tech gun rig on the 1st of April 1915. He surprised a German pilot by flying straight at him, firing guns through his propeller, and successfully downed the enemy. Dutch engineer Anton Fokker soon came up with a more sophisticated solution than deflector plates. It was called the interrupter gear. The interrupter system, which was essentially a crankshaft-driven mechanism, allowed the machine gun to fire when the propeller was clear of the barrel, but disabled it when the propeller was in front of it like that. Simple. The levers and rods of the interrupter gear put an end to the problem of shooting off your own propeller. In 1916, the Fokker Eindecker, complete with interrupter gear, hit the skies over Europe. It was a very effective fighter and won Germany air superiority. The Allies came to know it as the Fokker Scourge. <laughs>